This video is brought to you by the Deck of Many and their Hecna 5e campaign book on Kickstarter now. This video is also brought to you by the Roll for Combat podcast and their RPG Superstar Contest. Make your own monsters, help determine this year's grand prize winner, and win prizes of your own at RPGSuperstar.com. Hello and welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. Hey, we've got a new sponsor that I'm really excited to tell you about at the end of the video today, so stick around for that. But otherwise, today I have something a little different for you. Back in July, Wizards of the Coast announced three new sets of metal die-cast minis that were going to be exclusively available through Walmart of all places. Today we're looking at one of those sets, which features Driz Dorden and three other figures. These are officially branded Dungeons & Dragons minis, and I'm really curious to see how good they are. I'm all about making the hobby more accessible to people, and having something on the store shelves of Walmart will certainly get D&D in front of a lot of people who may not otherwise know anything about it. And these are right in the toys section, right alongside packs of Roblox and Batman figures. And they're pretty affordable, as you might expect. This set here runs for about $5 for four painted metal figures. These are manufactured by a company called Jada Toys, which makes everything from the Fast and the Furious to Hello Kitty toys. They have a whole range of figures called Nano Metal Figs, which look more or less exactly like these guys. And those run the gamut from DC superheroes to WWE wrestlers to characters from Harry Potter. In this first set of D&D figures we're reviewing here, they include figures that they call Drizzt, Drow Elf Ranger, Dragonborn Cleric, Human Fighter, and Mind Flayer. So let's open this set up and see how they stack up against our other painted plastic minis. First, let's take a look at Drist, one of the iconic heroes of the Forgotten Realm setting. He was created by R.A. Salvatore for the Icewind Dale trilogy of novels. You'll notice that the paint jobs on these is very basic, without real shading of any kind. This figure also has what looked to me at first like two supports along his back, but maybe they're just scabbards for his dual swords. And you'll notice that the minis don't have standard size bases. We'll circle around to that in a moment. Here is our Dragonborn Cleric. The lack of shading and the basic paint job really hit this figure pretty hard. To me, he looks rather like a Mon Calamari from Star Wars. It's also rather difficult to tell what it is he seems to be holding. Looking at the official 5e art for Dragonborn, it appears to be that white dragon-shaped mace or scepter thing there. His armor appears to be made of metal and cloth, but it's all been painted the same color. I think if you wanted to repaint this one, you could really make some significant improvements. I do like the shiny metallic look of these metal figures for the creatures that are supposed to be wearing heavy metallic armor. The Human Fighter Mini is a bit better. Again, the limited color palette does it a disservice. I do appreciate getting more human minis that appear to be people of color, and it's great that he has a distinctive look. He's armed with the sword, spear, and a plain shield. You'll notice that the sculpts themselves aren't too bad. It really is the paint job that's holding these figures back. Finally, perhaps the best mini in this set is the Mind Flayer. I wouldn't mind using this figure in my games. We'll compare the size of these minis to our standard ones in just a moment, but the paint job and the pose on this figure, while still basic, are okay. Mind Flayers are classic D&D monsters, evil and sadistic aberrations with powerful psionic abilities. Perhaps there's something to be said for having a heavy metal figure for a big bad such as a Mind Flayer. Now, one of the main questions I had was how these figures look next to most of our other minis, like the figures from Icons of the Realms and Pathfinder Battles from WizKids. As you can see, they're certainly at a bit of a larger scale. The bases of the Dragonborn, Drizzt, and the Human Fighter are almost two inches by one inch, actually, which could cause a little bit of confusion on your battle map. The Mind Flayer's base is a bit smaller, but still overflows that one inch square a little bit. Things tend to get a little crowded if there's other creatures in the squares next to them. And the figures just generally look varying degrees of larger than our WizKids minis. But they're not so large as to be completely unusable. Again, I think the Mind Flayer comes out the best in this set. And as we look at the other sets in the line, I think you'll see a pattern of the monster minis being a bit better than the PC minis. If you like the look of these and you think it's fun to have a heavy metal mini on your table, man, go for it. 
You can even touch up the paint job a little bit if you want to. For the price, it's a fun little set of minis. Being a little oversized or a bit underpainted probably doesn't matter for the target audience, which I suppose is kiddos. These may grab some kid's attention and make her wanna learn more about Drist or Mind Flayers or just Dungeons and Dragons. Now, to be honest, it's probably the other two sets of minis that you and I might like better. One features a beholder and the other one a red dragon. We'll talk more about those very soon here. Let me know what you think about these in the comment section down below. Let me introduce you quickly to our new sponsor. The Roll for Combat Actual Play podcast is a very prolific, enjoyable, and professional podcasting operation. They're an officially licensed Paizo podcast focused on Pathfinder and Starfinder. And it's a great way to see those two games in action, especially if you're not familiar with them yet. I've been listening to their playthrough of the introductory short campaign for Pathfinder 2nd Edition called The Fall of Plague Stone. And the podcast is fun and nicely edited with music and sound effects, and it's just a joy to listen to. But they're also now in charge of the long-running Paizo RPG Superstar Competition, where you can submit your own monster that you created to win prizes, including getting it illustrated and published. I hadn't heard about this, even though apparently it's been running since 2007. You can check it out and go vote on this year's entries at rpgsuperstar.com. And Roll for Combat, welcome to the Goblin family, and thank you for supporting our work here. And many thanks to our ongoing sponsor, The Deck of Many. The Kickstarter for their new campaign setting book, Hecna, is currently ongoing. Hecna is a 5e adventure book designed to take characters from level 1 to 10 in a whimsical, dark carnival setting. The book includes the replayable, customizable adventure, plus, of course, new monsters, magic items, spells, and more. And as always, with The Deck of Many, there's plenty of options to bling out your game. They have standees, several sets of minis, fold-out maps, a fabric map, animated spell cards like these, and all sorts of other things. You can get the deluxe print and play PDF version for just 20 bucks, all the way up to the full box sets and add-ons. Learn more about Hecna and let them know that the Gallant Goblin sent you by clicking that little link in the corner of your screen up there or the link in the video description down below. Thank you for watching today. I know having two ads at the end can feel a little bit much sometimes, but we only accept sponsorships from companies that we think you'll like, and we try not to let the ads get in the way of our content too much and it's their financial support that lets us make these videos for you. If you want to help support us as well, you can check out the Roll for Combat podcast and let them know we sent you, and use the link in the video description down below to check out and maybe support the Hecna Kickstarter. You can also drop this video a like, a comment, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section down below. Come join the discussion and hear the latest deals and news on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you again for watching. Please stay safe out there. Have fun, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.